Hey guys, welcome back to No Catch Name. It's me, Ella, and this is episode number 93, I think, and it's a short one. Hey guys, welcome back. I wanted to hop on here real fast and go ahead and film a No Catch Your Name episode, even though I don't really have a lot to share, just so that I don't get super behind because I'm afraid of doing that. <laughs> but I, uh, I got another finished object to show you physically, like right now. It was already a finished object, but I added to it, so now it's done again. And then I have two more finished objects that I don't have anymore, but my sister sent me a picture that I'll pop up because I forgot to take a clip of them before I gave them to her yesterday. <laughs> Technically, that is also four finished objects because it's two separate patterns, but whatever. And then I have one whip to show you that I forgot to show you guys last week because it was behind my couch. It somehow got behind my couch and I forgot that it existed, but I did work on it some since the last time you've seen it, so I thought I would share it again. And yeah, this is going to be a quick episode. So my first finished objects I will talk about is the hats that I made. My sister wanted me to make her son, my nephew who is eight, a Maltese cross hat. So for it I used Red Heart Super Saver, Cherry Red for the hat, and the, the gray, the few lines of gray is Red Heart Super Saver, but I can't remember what the color is called. It was just a scrap ball. I think it's like heathered gray or something similar to that. And for the little Maltese cross thingy <laughs> was um, Red Heart Super Saver in gold. And uh, I used up a lot of scrap for this. It took up a whole ball and a half of red that I had, the cherry red, and most of the gray and some of the gold. So I'm trying to like get my scrap box emptied a little bit. <laughs> I think I might make a scrap blanket or something. But uh, the Maltese cross was a super easy pattern. It is a free applique pattern available on a website called the Hooked Haberdasher. I think is how you say it. It'll be linked below. But it was super quick and easy. Um, I had it memorized. When I made the first hat, it was super easy to do. And then by the time I had to make the second one, um, I just did it out of memory. So it's a really easy little pattern and it's cute. It makes the uh, image pretty good. So my sister's husband is a firefighter and her son aspires to be one. So that's why she, he, she wanted a hat for him. And uh, I made the little one first, and it was too little this way for him. So she brought it back by, and I, I extended it, you know, longer, put more rows of red on it. And then um, she thought it was too tight on his head. So I went ahead and made a one, one increase bigger and longer, too. That's why there's two of them. And uh, turns out the little one does fit his head because, you know, crochet stretches a little after it's used, and especially after... It gets really used and washed. It'll stretch a little. And I told her that. So she's going to use the little one for her son. And he did try it on again and it does fit. It's just kind of snug right now until it stretches. And um, the bigger one she's going to give to her husband. <laughs> because it uh, came out pretty big. They both fit on my head. And the bigger one was big on my head. So it should fit her husband. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that one does fit her son. It's just he probably didn't try it on that well. He's eight. So, you know, <laughs> whatever. But um, I had a picture up the whole time. Hopefully, if I remember to put it in of those hats. The hat was just a basic half double crochet hat. On the little one when I did the gray I did it in single crochets and but on the big one I just made it half double crochets and I think the very last row on the little one is single crochet and I did do that on the big one but it ended up being too long and instead of ripping out two rows and then doing one single I just ripped out the single and left it a half double crochet. But they were just basic uh, half double crochet beanies. I started with nine single crochet I think in a magic loop and then I just increased from there and went down and uh, I went by hat measurement size sizes from Google <laughs> it took me to the one from the crochet crowd and I don't know how reliable it is because I made it the length that it said and, it, and his ears were still sticking out uh, maybe some people like their ears to stick out but we all of our beanies we make them I always try to make them to right here so that your ears don't get cold so um, I guess it's just trial and error. You just gotta make a hat and then try it on someone's head to see if it fits. But yeah, so that's all that about those hats. Uh, I will link the pattern for the applique below if you're interested. My next finished object is, it's finished, it's just not the the ends aren't woven in and it's still attached to the yard. Because I wanted to make sure that I, that it was long enough for me. Let me put them on. These are my fingerless gloves that I made the other day. I showed them to you guys in the last No Catch Name episode. But uh, I talked about how I wanted to add some length, and I still had some of that yarn left, and I still have some of it left. <laughs> um, so I was going to add length, and a lot of people said, yeah, you should go ahead and just add some length. So I did add length, and I'll just got to cut the yarn and weave in the ends. This is Knit Crate yarn. <laughs> but see, I added, you can see where it is. I added a couple inches. I did half double crochets. 
even though the most of it is made in single because I want it to be stretchier because I didn't want my fingers to be, you know, like stuck in one position. I wanted to be able to do that. <laughs> but, um, I think this is much better. I feel like this can be mo way more cozier and I can even, you know, like if I'm sitting somewhere, I can just kind of tuck my fingers in there like at a parade or something. And, uh, but I still have the ability to text and uh, drive and all that without my hands slipping everywhere. So I like them. I think they're pretty. I love this yarn. I wish I had more of it. Um, I don't know why. I just like it and think it's pretty. I still got a good little hunk of it that I can use. Ah! And it's worsted weights or DK. I can't remember. But I can use it in a scrap project. Basic crochet finger fingerless gloves. It's a free pattern. I just said that already. But it's from craftytuts.com and it'll be linked below. And I did um, alter it a little bit like I said. I did add a couple inches to the top and I added some down here too. The original pattern is only like that big. So I had, I had like four inches all total just to make them longer. And it's a super customizable pattern. You can make it bigger if you have bigger arms or wrists or if you make it for like a man or something. Or you could probably even make it smaller if you want to make it for a child. And uh, I just got lucky to be the size that she made the pattern in. <laughs> and um, I just wanted length down here so that it would be under my jacket and um, not right at the cuff, you know. And then I wanted warmth up here for my fingers so super easy customizable pattern pretty easy i like it i could even go back and add some length on the the uh thumb i might do that because i got yarn left and that would be a good way to use up some yarn just up to like the knuckle so that the thumb's still you know usable for phones and stuff but a little bit more snugged <laughs> i might do that i think i might do that yeah so you'll probably see this in the next location name <laughs> again they're a little hard to get off but i kind of like that because it makes them tight when they're on and actually, it's kind of compression gloveish, and that actually helps. So the day when my hand was hurting, my right hand, I put it on while I was crocheting, and it helped. It felt better. So I like the idea of that. So I guess I will snip the yarn from the top and add it to the thumb holes, and add some a couple rounds to the thumb holes, and then I'll show you that, show you that next week. <laughs> okay, now this is the whip that I lost behind the couch. <laughs> I forgot that I was even working on it, but I need to hurry up because I need it. It's a Christmas tree skirt. It's going to take me a second to get it out because I don't know what yarn is attached to it. It's white. Okay. And I'm using a K-hook. And this is all Red Heart yarn. It's spring green, hot red or something like that. I can't remember. And white. And this pattern was a free pattern back when I got it. But I cannot find where it's from. I have it printed out and I've had it printed out for a while. And I keep looking for it. And the printed out copy I have doesn't have any, like links or anything on it. I don't even know where I got it. I've had it for years because I made, I've made two of these. I made myself one years ago and it was too small for our current tree. And then I made my sister one. But that's been years ago that I made mine before I even did YouTube and anything. I made my sister's I think last year or before that. And uh, so I'm making another one because I, like I said, the one, the one I used was way too small for my tree. Our tree is really fat at the bottom. So it needs to be really big. So last time I showed it to you, it was a lot smaller. I did add, um, I think the red, white, and green, the last red, white, and green rose. So it's basically a star blanket, just open so that it can go around the tree. I can't find this pattern anywhere, and I know people's going to ask because last time I showed it, people did. And I looked and looked and looked, and I can't find this exact pattern. I find some that's similar to it, and they kind of come out looking the same, but the beginning part isn't the same. So I don't know where this pattern came from. I have the printed one of it from years ago, but I just, like I said, it doesn't have any um, way to know who made it. It doesn't have the designer name or a link or anything on it. It just has the name of the pattern, which is just tris Christmas tree skirt, and then the pattern. But it's really pretty. And there are tons out there like it. Because I, when I was looking up last time, I found a lot that were really similar to it. I think this is like a 12 point, maybe more, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, yeah, twelve point blanket essentially, just it's not connected. You just instead of going in around, you just chain and turn. But I think it's really pretty. I love the colors that remind me of the Grinch, <laughs> which I love. And our Christmas tree is white. It's a flocked one, so it's really white. It's got a lot of snow on it. <laughs> and I think this will look really good if I can get it done. But uh, I need to sit down and work on it. The reason I kind of stopped working on it and the reason it fell behind the couch is because my K-hook was hurting my hand. But then I was gifted um, two sets of hooks with different handles. So I'll be switching this out for that and seeing if I can 
do it more comfortably then. So I will show you guys this uh, next week if I work on it. And for sure when it's finished, I'll show it. But I wish I could find the original person because I hate to use their pattern and like talk about it and show it and stuff without telling who it is. But I can't, there's no way I can look it up. I've even tried, there's a picture on the pattern. I've tried the image search and it brings up other ones. It doesn't bring up that particular one. So I don't know if maybe the person who wrote it just deleted it. Because uh, it's probably from Ravelry because I've had it for years and years and years. Uh, and that was where I used to always only get my patterns from that and just googling so I don't know I came across it somehow and liked it enough to download it and print it and uh, now I don't know whose it is but it's pretty either way and it is a basic pattern like I said there's tons of them out there just look up Christmas tree skirt and like a star 12 point star Christmas tree skirt and you'll find it stuff it back in the project bag Okay, and I just realized something. I gotta get some more spring green to finish that. Because I had a big old ball of spring green. But someone asked if I had any because they needed some and I sent it to them. So now I don't have any. <laughs> I'll have to get some more spring green. Again, I'm always looking for spring green to uh, use in this. Because I don't think I have any scrap balls with it. Oh well, I'll get some. Or I'll get some mainstays green because it's really similar. Did he just spilled his Play-Doh toys? <laughs> but yeah. That's all in this. That's all for this episode of No Catchy Name. I uh, like I said, I don't have a whole lot to talk about, but I wanted to go ahead and make a video anyway, so that I don't get super behind. I still need to make the tractor for my Jada blanket. And speaking of that, Jada commented on my video about my blanket, and she liked my kayaks and my dog. And I was like, <laughs> I fangirled. I actually took a screenshot of that and saved it, and uh, I'm gonna keep that forever <laughs> because you know, to me, she's a celebrity, and she watched my video and commented on it, and. Uh, so that was a big thing but I need to do the tractor and then she put out little pumpkins and little sunflowers which I'm probably gonna make both of those and uh, there's other little things I want to make myself okay sorry about that he had a hard time getting play-doh open I had to go help him <laughs> get that open anyways what I was saying about the Jada is I want to get caught up on that and then I'll, I got the square blankets to start working on and these so I'm trying to get done with some of this stuff before I start new whips even though I really want to make a shawl with the eye siren that I was gifted <laughs> and it's sitting right there and I want to use it but I can't because I gotta get this stuff under control and I still have the stuff I need to frog because I was planning on making a video about that I thought that'd be kind of cool to watch me frog it I don't know <laughs> but yeah so I guess that's everything for this episode because um all the happy mob I've been getting I've been talking about in the vlogs so if you sent me any happy mob uh check out the vlogs and you'll see when I got it <laughs> and um Vlogtober is almost over, so uh, November will be a little bit less videos probably. I probably will still will vlog some in November because we'll we'll still do some cool things that I want to share um, throughout the month. And then December will definitely be, definitely <laughs> I will definitely be participating in Vlogmas because I do that every year and it's fun. It's my favorite time of the year and I love sharing it, everything that we do with you guys. So yeah, I guess I will see you guys in the next video whenever it comes out. And hopefully I'll have some more finished objects, but I've just been so busy sewing that I haven't had a lot of time to crochet. But I'm almost, I'm getting, getting there with the bags. <laughs> and then I'll have some more set down time to sew and stuff. I mean, not sew, crochet. <laughs> Whatever, I don't know what I'm saying. But I'm gonna hop off here because I gotta go stir up our dinner. I can, I can tell it needs to be stirred. <laughs> Bye guys.